All right, so in this part of the tutorial series, we are going to export this Fusion model as an FBX, and then we're going to use Quadra to retopologize it in Maya. Now, when I recorded these tutorials, the, the series on how to model this, exporting as an FBX wasn't an option, but it is now. And it's very, very simple. It just takes a few minutes. Uh, all you gotta do is go to the File menu, select Export, and then from the uh, drop down here, you just select FBX and then tell it, actually, let me hop back to that menu for a moment and then tell it where you want it to go. And then it's gonna take a few minutes. It does some kind of a cloud uh, computing operation, but that's all you gotta do on the fusion end. And then once you get into Maya, let me hop over to the correct menu. You just have to import the FBX. So we don't have to worry about any of this stuff. We just hit import. And there you will see your geometry. And if you expand the locator icon here, you'll see each one, uh, each piece of the geometry that you exported as a separate body out of Fusion has its own representative geo here in the FBX. So some of this stuff we're going to want to retopologize individually, and some of it we can actually just kind of combine together uh, into one retop pass. So for example, these little screws here don't actually break the silhouette. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you what I mean by that. I'm gonna hide the selection. Sorry, hide unselected. Uh, looks like I need to grab that face as well. And considering that, I think I'll go ahead and just deselect these. And we'll just use that as, uh, as our first example here. So I'm gonna to go to display, hide, unselected. And what we can see is as we look at the side view here, the sort of glancing angle, these screws don't actually break the silhouette. This thing right here, this little cutout definitely does. We get a big break right there. So we're gonna to wanna to include this in the retop. This hole we need to include, but the screws we can actually just kind of go right over the top of them because it'll it'll catch that in the in the normal map and it should be totally fine. So if we wanted to, we can come over here and combine this. The only issue with doing that is then we're gonna have to basically isolate those screws if we wanted to give them a different material, which I think we probably will. So an example of geometry that we wouldn't want to include, or um, let's see, the, a better way to phrase that, geometry that we would want to make sure we are, we are treating as a separate piece of geo here is this thing. So we could potentially, I think we're probably, the easiest thing would probably be just to treat this thing and this thing as indiv individual pieces. But you can see this screw right here basically covers up the hole underneath it. So we don't actually need to worry about that hole because you'll never see it. Let me go ahead and put a different material in here so it's just a little bit easier to see what's going on. I'm gonna select everything and we'll just make a blend. I'm gonna assign the blend to, sorry, I think I better reselect. Right click on the blend, assign it, and then I'm gonna come over to the edit menu and just hit delete unused and that'll clear up anything that we don't have have assigned here in the scene. And now we're basically ready to begin our retop. So I'm gonna avoid combining things just quite yet. It's not a huge problem if I decide to do it, but uh, for now it's not necessary. I'll just have to keep in mind that these things are, are, are going to be included in the in the geometry for this piece. So let's go ahead and jump, jump into the blade here. I'm gonna rename this blade high. Oops, this should be familiar if you've Watch the controller tutorial. Also my trouble with spelling. So I'm gonna uh, hide everything else. Control H, I'm gonna make this live. And then go to the modeling toolkit. And again, if your modeling toolkit is uh, hidden or not over in your little sign menu, you can just go to Windows, Modeling Editors, Modeling Toolkit, and it'll pop up. And we just want to activate the quad draw menu and scroll down a little bit. And I'm going to expand my mouse and uh, keyboard shortcuts here because I, there's occasionally things in here that I can't remember how to do. But uh, what I'd like to do to begin is take a look at this, this whole cut here. And I could probably go through and pretty evenly retopologize this. In fact, let's do that. I was thinking about using a, a primitive, but I, I just don't think it's going to be worth the hassle. 
but I do want to use symmetry. So we need to confirm that this thing is actually sitting on uh, the world center here. It's not always going to be the case, but in this case, I think it is. So we can turn on, uh, let's see, X symmetry. So we can see right here, that little X, that's the, the sideways uh, axis there. So let's go to symmetry. We'll turn on object X. And we can just kind of begin clicking on the surface, keeping an eye on the features. So it's not going to let me create a piece of geometry for this triangle configuration here, just because it's it's uh, it's going to want to stick into quads. But you can always add one and then just snap it like that. So and that's a good example of when you would potentially want a triangle. Now I think for the circular stuff, in order to get a good bake, what I'm going to do is try to make sure that I have quads on that border. Whoops, I just uh left quad draw mode by tapping the W key. I don't really want to do that. So this is what I was talking about with, with using a primitive. If I had grabbed a cylinder, the spacing on these would be perfect as opposed to probably good enough, which is what I'm doing now. So I just add a couple of points, hold the shift key, and it will allow me to create a quad there. And I'm just kind of doing my best. I'm mostly paying attention to the inside line, like this other stuff here. I'll probably expand this out a little bit, get a little more coverage. But for now, we'll just get this ring figured out. And I'm, I may be putting far too many faces here. But it's pretty round and it's pretty prominent. We don't want to have obvious faceting there if we can avoid it. And then here, what would make the most sense, because we've got that edge, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's pretty subtle, so I'm not that worried about it. But you might end up triangulating that so that you can preserve that, uh, that feature there. And then I'm just going to make it so that I have a nice logical place to connect that stuff up. So we'll just sort of pull back and take a look. I guess is that's probably not necessary. The low poly's mission is to capture the silhouette of the high poly and to do it in a way that's relatively efficient. So it's okay to use triangles in many scenarios, places where you would not want to use triangles. This is a uh, maybe dangerous because it's on a 90 degree angle. So like to have a point on a 90, 90 degree angle is uh, it's a little bit risky. So I'm actually going to remove these and let's see if I can find the command for deleting a face here. Let's see, uh, it looks like, well, the easiest way is just to hop out of quadra mode, select the face and delete it. I'm going to get rid of this one too. And then we'll just head back into quadra and we'll just keep everybody happy as much as we can by staying in quads. Okay. So uh, that is the beginning of this process and we will pick it up in the next video.